Hi again, I'm Daryl Gaian and this is 14 to 0 Golf. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you how I dial in my wedges. We're going to go through my wedge swing, analyse it and show you what you can take from my wedge swing and put into your game to make your wedges better. Enjoy the video. We're going to play a game. What I like to do to dial in my wedges is use my personal launch monitor. I use the SC100 which is here. From Swing Caddy. On this, it has three functions. Practice, which you set the club to see how far you hit the ball. Target, where you set a designated distance for each club and then try and hit that over and over. Or you have random. And on random, it will give you random yardages from 40 to 100 yards. And the aim of the game is to get as close carry to that yardage as you can. What happens is they give you points for how close you get to it. There'll be maximum you can get is 11 and 10 if you get close. So the maximum I can get on this game is going to be 110. Um, my, one of the most important things is to use proper balls, not range balls. Um, I like to use my usual ball, which is Q Star Tour. Um, that's the only way to get real consistent yardages so what we're going to do is we're going to play a game where i'm going to see what my highest tally can be on here if i don't get over 95 i have to do 30 press ups and skylar's going to count them so let's give it a go
You did it. So I've recovered now. Let's talk about my 60 yard and 80 yard wedge swing. Here I'm set up for my 59 yard wedge shot with my 56 degree wedge. As you can see, feet aren't too wide, nice little bit of shaft lean. Let's put a box around my head so we can track my head movement as well because we don't want to move a lot in the swing. If we take it back to the top, you can see my head stayed within the box. There's not a lot of leg movement, but you can see the left knee's kicked out a teeny bit, which means I'm rotating my hips. Um, hands aren't too high. I usually imagine that my hands get hard, well lower than this on this, but it's just a thought process when I'm swinging. So... As I get down to impact position, you can see I've retained the shaft lean. Head has dropped back a teeny bit. I would like to see it closer to the left side of the box. But as I come through, I've kept the shaft lean. Head still stayed in the box, so I'm kind of happy. But the next move is where you're going to see is the most important. As you can see, I have completely exited left. My whole body has rotated even past my uh, torso facing the target i've rotated right round this is gonna make sure you get almost like a cut motion across the ball but it is so important in wedge shots once i added this into my wedge shots they improved tenfold and if we just come back i'll just show you this leg position i would like to see you can see how my legs Almost looks like I'm leaning back a teeny bit. I would like to see myself improve by, and you can do improve by, leaning a little bit on your left side. This is my 80 yard, well, 81 yard wedge shot with my 56 degree from down the line. And as you can see, I've put a box around my head again so we can track that movement because we don't want it moving too much on the wedge shot. Um, stance looks quite nice you can see how my arms are hanging down nicely this is very important in wedge shots you don't want to stiffen up um, let's put a line up my, uh, against my bum so we can track my um, depth in the swing so here you can see a little bit further back let's put a line on right my bum has not dipped back which is good my head isn't dipping it stayed in the box um, the plane, I do tend to get a little bit upright on my wedges and I would, to be honest, like to see my wedge be a little bit closer to the ball along the lines of the actual um, down plane that you're going to see in a minute. Um, so let's get it. Oh, I've missed out the top of the swing there, but basically what you're seeing is this plane... I would like to see more of a one plane along the blue line for back and through. What that's gonna, I just think a one plane wedge swing would be much better. Importantly, as you can see, my bum has not moved off that line too much. My head stayed pretty still. This is really important for that kind of one plane feel. As I said in the 59 yard swing, Exiting left is one of the most important things in wedge shots. Um, you can practice this very easily. There's many drills. Um, but basically, here you can see my shaft plane as I've come through is left of my shoulder. We want to see that. So you, you want to be rotating your chest to or maybe further than facing the target. And here to the finish lovely um finish where i'm just whole body's turned left looking at the target i'm very happy with this plus my, you see my right heel hasn't come too far off the floor which is also important because you just don't want a crazy amount of body movement in a wedge shot but if you can exit left across a wedge that is so important forget about me let's show you how a real pro does it no introduction of this guy needed but I picked him because, sh as short games go, he has one of the best. I mean, you don't get to where he is without it. So look at how them arms are hanging lovely, which I said in my 
um, pictures of my swing. And now let's take it back a bit. As you'll see on this plane, um, Phil Mickelson's a lot flatter than my swing, which is maybe making me wonder whether I've got it right with the whole, um, well, what I keep saying about on the wedges, trying to get like a one plane feel where I come back down to the ball. Um, but then again, there's no right way in golf, is there? So if we um, show, let's show his plane on the way down. So here you'll see this is identical to a problem in my first video that I ever made where I'm, I was coming over the top, but he must do this for the um, kind of cutting across wedge impact because as you'll see as he comes through here, like I said before, the most important thing, he's rotated left. You could see that visibly there and finished holding it to the left. And um, I can tell you this, this shot landed five to ten feet past the flag, rolled back and hit the pin. So this is definitely a good one I'm showing you. Um, but if there's anyone to imitate from wedges, Phil Mickelson's the man. And maybe I might have a look at my plane changing. So let's um, flip Mickelson round so we can do a little comparison pictures. You can see us both standing here. Both of our arms are hanging down nicely. There's a lot more spine tilt to Mickelson and his are hanging more comfortably, but that's because I'm using a seven iron length wedge. So that creates a couple of problems. But what I have learned to do is choke down an inch so that I do get a little bit more hang like that. But um, if we take it back a little, you can see the difference in planes. Mine's more similar to my usual plane when I swing and his is more similar to his. So I don't think we can read too much into this. Um, but what you will see that I might take from this is Mickelson has a nice bit of hip rotation that I don't. You'll see in our backswing, both of our elbows and arms have stayed connected, which is very important. But if we come on to the downswing, as you can see on the downswing, Mickelson has come over the top a teeny bit. He's coming just inside the ball. Our actual downswing planes are fairly similar. So I'm not too worried as long as I'm coming back down to that same point. Um, he stayed down over the ball better. Um, and But as you'll see, both of our right legs aren't running away. Mine looks a little too armsy compared to his. That's only in the thing I have to say about mine. Now, here's a big difference. We've both rotated left, both of our hips look the same, everything about that looks the same, apart from what Mickelson has done well is kept his spine angle. And what I have not done very well is keep my spine angle. You can see I've come off of the shot, which is probably from trying to exit left. But if I can, I would like to add in what he does there and hold my spine angle so hope you've enjoyed that review thank you here is a drill that i like to do to help me to exit left as you can see in the picture i've drawn a green line over a golf club that i've placed in a basket the arrow is pointing at you can do this in your garden by stabbing the golf club into the floor um don't tell your missus or your mum and dad that I told you to do it but you put it in the floor maybe an inch left of your left heel and your aim is to swing at the ball and kind of exit left of that golf club so try not to alter your swing plane on the way down I don't want to see you coming over the top swing down and turn hard left just after you've hit the ball takes a little bit of experimenting with but it really will pay off for ball striking I am even going to be trying this drill over the next couple of weeks, trying to help with my new flatter swing path.